Hey there, Westerosi. Welcome to Mike Meeple's Painting Poorly Miniature Painting Tutorials. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the first infantry unit to be released for the Targaryen faction from Come On Games' A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures game. Today, we look at the Unsullied Swordmasters. These killer eunuchs are an absolute beast on the battlefield, and a box of these bad boys comes with 13 miniatures in 6 dynamic different sculpts to showcase their ferocity. And while I'm going to be drawing most of my inspiration from the amazing in-game art, I'll also be integrating some elements from their look on the HBO series, making sure to pay extra attention to the skin and incorporating some color into their clothing to really make them pop on the battlefield. As a reminder, I focus on easy techniques for beginners, so if you've never picked up a brush, you can follow along with me and learn. I'll be priming my figures with some Steinal Res Black Primer and my airbrush. You can use any black rattle can primer if you like, but I like the Steinal Res Primer because it goes on really well, and if you miss a spot you can always do a brush on application later. Once that's dry, it's time for base coats. With our models primed black, we're going to start off with a dry brush of Necron Compound by Citadel. Take a wedge or chisel brush like this, and load up your Necron Compound before brushing a good amount of it off on your finger or another surface. When you start dry brushing, you'll paint against the grain, so to speak. This dry brush will color all of the armor and shields with a black and steel look that is just perfect for our Unsullied. Once you're done with that, we'll be using Flat Earth by Vallejo, thinned with equal parts water, to paint the skin. You may want to apply two coats with this color to get even coverage. 
Just be sure that the first coat is completely dry before you apply a second. Don't forget to paint the hands, including the one holding the shield. You can also paint the flagpole of the standard bearer this color as well. Next, we'll take some field blue by Vallejo, mixed with equal parts water, and paint the cloth. After that, we'll take some German Grey by Vallejo, mixed with equal parts water again, and paint the leather portions of the model. This includes the belts, sandals, scabbard, sword handles, wrist straps, and you can also use this to touch up the back of the shield if there's any stray color on them from painting the skin. Also, take some time to paint the flag itself this color as well.
The final color we'll need for base coats will be plate mail metal by the army painter. Use this to paint the sword blades, hilts, and pommels along with the belt buckles and metal portions of the scabbard. You can also use this to touch up any portions of the armor that have any spots of stray paint on them. For an extra bit of pop, you can paint the rim of the shield from the top bringing the color down around the sides. Once that's all dry, it's time for shades! We're going to start off with Flesh Wash by the Army Painter. Just apply a small amount of Flesh Wash to all the parts of the skin, trying your best not to get any on the armor. Once that's dry, we'll be using Nuln Oil from Citadel. This will go on all other portions of the model. The armor, sword, shields, clothing, flag, everything. If you ever get too much in any particular place, you can always soak some up with your brush. When the models are completely dry, it's time for highlights and finishing touches. We're going to start by highlighting the skin using Flat Earth again.
focus on painting each muscle and avoiding the recesses that are darkest from the shade. For the face, you can apply a small dot of highlight to the chin and one underneath each eye. You can also highlight the flagpole with this color by painting a line right up the front of it. After that, we'll be using a half and half mix of Vallejo Flat Earth and Rose Brown to add a second level of highlight to the skin. Try to paint the center portion of each area that you already highlighted, leaving a little of the previous color showing all around it. This creates a gradient effect and the illusion of dynamic lighting. After that, we're going to take our field blue again and highlight the cloth. Just highlight the edges and each fold where the cloth billows outward. Next, we're going to mix up some Sky Gray and Field Blue by Vallejo to add a second level of highlight to the cloth. Use this color sparingly and only on the outward most portions of the previously highlighted cloth, as too much can be jarring.
Next, we'll be using Neutral Gray from Vallejo. We'll start off by painting an edge highlight on the flag. Just follow all the edges of the flag with a thin line of the Neutral Gray. After that, we can use this color to add highlights to all the leather. For the belts and scabbards, simply add some edge highlights along each of them. For the sandals, notice how I'm not sticking strictly to where the straps are sculpted. A few well-placed small highlights across the top of each foot will sell the effect. Next, we'll be adding a little bit of highlight to all the helmets using our plate mail metal. Paint a thin edge highlight down the center ridge of the helmets and along the edges of the helmets that are below the cheeks and on either side of the mouths. This will help draw attention to the face while the models are on the table. Now that we're done highlighting, we'll be adding a little terrain effect using Vallejo's brown earth paste. I use an old brush and just dab it around in a relatively random manner, which helps make a good, uneven, natural looking terrain once it dries. Once it's dry, which can take over two hours depending on how much brown earth paste you use, I'll be adding a dry brush of dark sand by Vallejo to give the terrain some highlights. Try to use an older brush for this, as dry brushing terrain can really mess up a brush. I'm also adding a dry brush of dark sand to some portions of the figure itself, like the edges of the cloth that would drag near the ground or sandals. This helps sell the effect of the sandy desert terrain. Once that's done, you can paint the rim of the base and spray it with your matte varnish when it's completely dry. To complete the desert look, use some super glue and glue on some small rocks. You can find these at any craft store, and I actually found these at the dollar store.
Well, that's it. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I want to give a big thank you to all my patrons whose generous support helped me make quality content like this. If you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, information on how to do so can be found in the description for this video, along with links to all the supplies I used today, and a link to my blog, where you'll find more tutorials for games like A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Westerosi!